This video is for OCR GCSE Business Studies and it's looking at Unit 5 which is Finance. Now this is part of the specification for Unit 5. Now in these two videos that I'm going to do, they're just going to be based on the formulas. So it's just going to be a quick summary and a breakdown of the different formulas that you will need. So in this video, I'm going to look at revenue, costs, profit and loss. So within that, I'm going to break down the different types of costs. I'm also going to look at different types of profits and how to account for that profit, including margins. And I'm also going to look at average rate of return. So to get started, let's have a look at total revenue. Now, total revenue is the income generated from selling goods or services. It's also known as turnover, receipt, sales or income. So in other words, a company is selling a product when money exchanges hands um, or when that sale is made, then that would be their revenue. But that would be their revenue for one unit. Now, when we're looking at total revenue, we're looking at the total income from selling all of their goods, which is their output. So the formula would simply be their selling price times their output or quantity sold. So in this scenario, we've got financial information for one month, and it's based on a company that is selling cushions. They sell 250 in a month, and the average selling price is £50. So to work out that, um, that revenue based on that financial information, all we simply need to do is get our £50 or selling price, times it by the output, which is 250 and we know in this month, on average, total revenue will be 12500 now, sometimes this information that's given to you, they make it a little bit more challenging. And what I mean by that is they may replace or uh, some of the figures or what they might do is, for example, have some of the some of the data missing. So let's imagine that you have a situation where you've got the revenue, you've got the price, but you don't know what the output is. So you'd have to rearrange the formula. So one way you could do that is get your revenue, divide it by your selling price, and you get your output of 250. Or it might be, the selling price is missing, but you've got your output and you've got your total revenue. So all you'd have to do is get your total revenue, divide it by your output, and there you go, you've got the selling price of 50 pounds. Total costs, that refers to the sum of all costs incurred by a firm. So that includes fixed costs and it includes variable costs as well. So what are the differences between the two? Well, fixed costs are independent of volume. So what I mean by that is they have to be paid regardless of output of how much they produce. Let's imagine this company just starts up and in the first month they actually produce no products. Well, your landlord is still going to expect rent. Your bank manager, if you've got a bank loan, will ex still expect your first month's loan repayment. So that would be an example or examples of fixed costs. Now, variable costs, though, are dependent on volume and they are therefore directly based on output. The more you produce, the higher your variable costs are going to be. For example, if you sell out a stock and you need to buy more stock, then your variable costs are going to add up because you need to pay for that stock in order to sell it. So, again, what we've got here, we've got our fixed costs of £7,440 each month. And we've got some examples of their variable costs. So we've got the cushion filling of £3. We've got their cushion covers of £6. And we've got wages which are paid per cushion made, which is £10. Now, this gives us the variable cost per unit, which is £19. But what we need to do is we need to get that £19 and we need to times it by the outputs. Because what we care about, especially when calculating total costs, is what their total variable costs are. So the variable cost per unit times by the units produced which would be £19, so the 10, the 6 and the 3 added up, times by their output in that month, which is 250 and therefore 4750 So now what we've got is we've got our total fixed cost for the month, we've got our total variable cost for the month, now we just simply need to add them up and we get our total costs. So our total cost for that month was £12,190. Now we've got all that information, we've got our revenue, we've got our costs, we can start to calculate our profit because our profit is the money that's left over from revenue once all costs have been deducted. So the simple formula is total revenue minus total costs and that gets you your profit. But there are other ways of calculating it in OCR GCSE business studies. So for example, you can calculate or you might be given their gross profit but not being given their net profit or their profit. So all you simply need to do is get your gross profit minus your expenses. But how do you work out your gross profits? Well, your gross profit is your total revenue minus your cost of sales. But what's your cost of sales? Well, your cost of sales is just another way of, of saying total variable costs. So before we worked out our total variable costs on the previous slide, if you just deducted that from revenue and not the fixed costs, then you get your gross profit. 
Once you've got your gross profit, if you just deducted your expenses, which is another way of saying fixed costs, then you'd get your net profit. So it's £310. That's the profit. But what we could have done is we could have got our £7,750, which is our gross profit, because that would be the 12500 minus the 4750 which would be the total variable costs. And then just take off our uh, fixed costs from that, also known as expenses, and you still get £310. So, the margins. Well, I've just told you what gross profit is. So, simply, your revenue minus your cost of sales. Um, and that's to do with, obviously, the costs which are directly based on output. Your net profit margin, or your net profit, sorry, is your gross profit minus your expenses. So that's where it takes expenses into it, in other words, your fixed costs. Now, to work out your margins, what we're trying to do is we're trying to analyze how much of a percentage of revenue is generated into profit. So in other words, for every one pound of revenue, how much tears into profit? And we do that via a percentage, hence we times it by 100. So all we'd have to do is get our gross profit, if it was gross profit margins, divide it by our sales revenue, times it by 100, and that would give us a percentage. And it would give us the idea of, for every one pound of revenue, how much does it? How much is turned into gross profit? If we were to work out our net profit margins, we just get our net profit divided by our sales revenue, and again times by 100 to get a percentage. And that is for every one pound of revenue, how much of that turns into net profit? So, if I know my gross profit is 7,750, I simply divide it by 12,500, times it by 100, and I get 62% gross profit margin. Is that good? Well, that depends. What's the market average? What was your gross profit margin last month? So you'd have to have a point of comparison. Or your net profit, we already know it's £310. And then 310 divided by 12,500 times by 100 and it gets 2.48%. Again, is that good? Well, you'd always expect the net profit margin to be lower than the gross profit margin because obviously it takes into account more costs. But there is a very, very big difference between the two. And if I was to analyse just based on this information alone, and I didn't have any points of comparison, I'd probably say if they wanted to cut out one of their costs out of variable and expenses, I'd probably go for their expenses in terms of their fixed costs because their fixed costs seem very, very high if for every one pound of revenue, it just generates 2.48% of net profit, which is, is, is low. So how can we compare? Net profit margin should always be lower. We're aware of that. In some industries, it'll be a lot more than others. It depends on the requirement of overheads and how important fixed costs are for the company and if they if they need those costs. Um, some might be able to minimize those fixed costs. Just depends on, again, the industry that they're in. Um, and how does it compare to previous years and the market average? You might have that information in the case study. If you do, make sure you use it if it's an evaluate question. Right, average rate of return then. That's a quantitative method of deciding whether an investment is likely to be worthwhile. Is it? Should we be carrying out this investment? Yes or no? Or if we've got an option of different types of investment, which one should we choose? So it's based on the average annual amount of cash generated over the life of an investment. So what we've got is three steps. Step one, step two, step three. So step one is just working out, I suppose, the profit after the cost of the investment has been deducted. So sometimes in, in OCR, it might be considered to be total profit, but you still minus the total cost of the investment. And you, and you might question, well, haven't they done that already? No, okay. For this average rate of return, you'd have to minus the total cost of the investment in step one. Sometimes they won't give you the total profit and you'd have to work that out. So they might only give you the profit or the uh, maybe an, a, just a, a profit for one year, but say they're planning on making the same for every... I don't know, let's say five years, then you just times it by five and then you'd minus the total cost of the investment. Then step two, once you've got that total profit, you divide it by the number of years, which gives you your average annual profit. Once you've got your average annual profit, then you divide it by the cost of the investment and you times it by 100. So let's go for an example. In this scenario, we've got fast stitch and we've got HD sewing. Now, they've already given us the average rate of return of 13.8% for Fast Stitch, but let's see how they did it. So, first of all, they did their 22,000 and they times it by five because uh, this whole scenario is based on that she wants the, the average rate of return and all the investment to be returned within five years. That gives us 110,000 minus the, the purchase price of the business. 
which is the cost, which is 65,000. And that gets, that gets us 45,000 for step one. Step two, we divide it by five years to get is our average annual profit of 9,000. And then we divide it by the purchase price of the business times by 100, it gets us 13.8%. So let's do the same for HD sewing. First, 25,000 times by five gives us 125,000. Minus 80,000, which is the purchase price of the business. That's 45,000. Same. Divide by five. Again, 9,000. The same. Difference being is the average rate of return will be different because the purchase price of the business is different. So once we get the 9,000 divided by 80,000 times by 100, we get 11.25%. So which one should we go for? We should go for Fast Stitch because it's got the highest average rate of return. So the best chance of seeing that, obviously, that return within the five years.